because there's no door knocks to bang your head on. My uncle, your hero and host, Rand Green. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Took my uh, took my wife Bernice out last night for an anniversary dinner. Yeah, yeah, I heard all about your kitchen fire. <laughs> I, I tried to surprise Bernice with some home cooking and almost cooked our home. <laughs> First of all, never flambe a whole goat. <laughs> and you know what? I think it's I think it's the darn cookbooks now. The print the print is so fine in them, you know? I thought for sure it said 40 ounces of brandy. <laughs> I know now you need a much bigger oven to, to, cook, a, to cook an entire goat like that. Ended up the, the tail got hooked into the rotisserie socket there. And I wound up with a flaming goat carcass doing about 30 RPM in the middle of the kitchen floor. I, I guess that's why all parties end up in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a mess, I'll tell you. But anyway, I, I decided to heck with that. I took Bernice out to a movie. What a disappointment, holy Last time I went, I went to see uh, Chariots of Fire. Which, uh, now I expected that to be a remake of Ben Hur with flamethrowers, and, and and this one here, it was it was what dinosaurs would do if they were around today. Ah, I know, I know, I know, I know what they do. I know what they do. <laughs> they they'd form a lodge and they all sit around and wonder why women don't understand them. <laughs> It's not just funny, it's witty. Well, yeah, but yeah, they're You know what's not funny about that? Eight bucks. Eight bucks, Harold. And, and the most likable character in the movie was made by a computer and bites people's heads off. I mean, how does that happen? Well, it's simple, because Hollywood only cares about young people, because we actually go to the movies. The only time they get your eight bucks is when you set your house on fire with goats. So... You know what? Somebody needs to make a movie for people like me. And I'm gonna do it myself. All right! Forrest Gump! <laughs> Here's a few scenes from this week's Chris episode. Angel. That's our game with Edgar and... I got a heavy-duty cappuccino espresso maker there, and uh, here's something else that's really hard to do. A clean show under a lot of pressure. Now things are really starting to come together for my movie. No blood and gore, no special effects, no obscene language, and no nudity. Well, no, 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 I've seen the people around here. Nudity would be counterproductive. <laughs> You know what, Fred? You're gonna need a script. And I myself have written over 38 different screenplays. <laughs> Almost selling one to the Community Access Channel. Almost! Perhaps I could write your script. No, Harold, I don't need a script. That's why I got these. I'm gonna use one of these for my script. No, 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 you can't do that. You have to, uh, you know, pay for the rights and stuff. No, no, I just changed the story a bit, you know. <laughs> no, look at this one here. Look, for instance, I'll take this one. Okay, you got a Southern Belle named Charlotte O'Hara. She falls in love with Brett Rutler in the, in the Civil War, and then Atlanta, no, no, Atlantis sinks into the sea, and she makes a dress out of a Venetian blind. That's gone with the wind, and everybody's going to know it. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We'll just make a movie about ourselves, Harold. The red-green story. The little guy triumphing over very big odds. Don't you mean the big odd guy triumphing over very little? Uh, you know, Harold, I'm just thinking I'm going to be casting for the part of Harold later. You might want to be a little nicer to me. I got to audition to play myself? Who, who, could, who could possibly play me? You know Porky Lansford? <laughs> Porky Lansford looks nothing like me. No, but his wife is a dead ringer. <laughs> Up. Can you play that song a bit louder? Can you pump up the bass and the treble and increase the output power? Hey, kids, can you turn off the boombox? 
Can you find louder music to play? Cause I've just done a really stupid thing and I'd rather not hear what my wife has to say. It's the Possum Lodge word game. And this week, and this week's grand prize is a beauty. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. You're gonna love this. This week's grand prize is for a pair of brass handles on the coffin of your choice from Dempsey's funeral home. <laughs> Dempsey's, where our motto is, good grief. Uncle Red. Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get local explosives expert, this fella here, Mr. Edgar Montrose, to say this word. Edgar, you gotta cover your ears. Edgar, your ears have to be covered. I think we're okay. Huh? You think already? <laughs> the word is unsafe. Unsafe. Yeah, all right, all right. 30 seconds and go. Okay, Edgar. Edgar. Go, go. 30 seconds. Go. Edgar, Edgar. Oh, I'm all ears, Red. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just no eardrums. Okay. If you stand too close to an explosion, that's. Uh, hard on your clothing. No, 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 no. Okay, if you just leave dynamite lying around, that would be. Oh, handy. Okay, yeah, no, all right. All right but, but let's say nut bars and lunatics get a hold of dynamite, then that would be. Texas. All right. Try this one. You're juggling bottles of nitro. Your clothes are covered in gas. Then it's... Oh, the weekend. No, no, it's almost out of time, Uncle Red. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I got seven sticks of lit dynamite in my mouth. My clothes are covered with gas. I'm roaring down the highway on the roof of a car. I would be... A copycat. <laughs> Don't be stealing my party tricks, Red. Very unsafe. Oh. You know, a lot of people these days are drinking the uh, espresso coffee. Apparently, this is enough to fill some people up, but not large people. This is more what I had in mind, Impresso Espresso. So this week on Handyman Corner, we're gonna make a man-sized machine to make man-sized espresso out of this uh, hot water heater here. See, the hot water heater is built to take lots of water and lots of pressure. Sort of like the lodge on nickel beer night. <laughs> All right, now you see there, you got a safety valve, right? Well, hey, if we were worried about safety, we wouldn't be drinking espresso. <laughs> All right, now we just got to plug up the bung hole there. Wow, no safety valve. Getting a caffeine rush already. <laughs> All right, now down here in this area, you got your thermostat, and it's set on high, but... I'm just gonna see if I can't coax that a little bit farther. Oh, baby. All right, well, that's heating up now. I'll start working on the filter. We got that unit set for nuclear meltdown. I'm thinking paper filter's not gonna do it. I'd rather go with a car radiator. It can take the heat and the pressure. And I got the bleeder valve here to dispense the coffee. And you know what? I think I'm gonna call that a dispensing valve. Because when I'm working on a project, I really don't want to hear the word bleeder. <laughs> now, if you like your milk steamed, just check out the tank. There's bound to be a pop rivet on there somewhere. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. That is hot. All right, our work here is done. Let's uh, let's have some coffee. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh, espresso. <laughs> oh yeah. All I need now is Juan Valdez and his donkey here. <laughs> Oh, that looks good. No, I think the donkey's already been here. Oh, for gosh sake, I forgot to put the coffee in. <laughs> forgot the coffee, for gosh All right, just get the rad cap off here. She's rested on a bit. Oh, here she comes. Boy, she's got a sting to her there. All right, now, uh, you could use the gourmet coffee on this, but I think you'll agree with what we're doing to it. You're better off to just go ahead with the cheap stuff. Okay, there we go. Should be all set. Let's have a little espresso. Got my cream and sugar. <laughs> oh, man. Well, if that isn't the best coffee you ever tasted, then my name is Mud. So remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Paint the shed brown. I want to talk to you older guys about your busy schedule. 
I'm guessing you're spending a big part of your day yelling at teenagers to turn the darn music down. Huh? And I bet you can't believe it, eh? Because 20, 30 years ago, remember, you used to love to have your music loud, eh? And now all of a sudden, you can't stand their music that loud. And when you realize your hearing's off 40%, imagine how loud it really is. Huh? <laughs> but let's be honest here. Volume is not the problem. You like some things loud. Your car exhaust, Matlock. <laughs> Young women saying how good you look for a man with your lifestyle. <laughs> the truth is, you don't like the new music loud because you don't like the new music, period. So stop yelling at the kids to turn it down. Start yelling at them to turn the darn stuff off. <laughs> remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. I said, remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Auditions. Behind the Beard, the Red Green story. Take one. I'm Harold Green and I'm auditioning for the part of Harold Green. Next. I'm Dalton Humphrey and I'm auditioning for the part of Harold Green. Lisa Rothschild, and I'm auditioning for the part of Red Green. Don't worry, ma'am. Saving a hundred orphans is all in a day's work for me. The bashful bachelor of Possum Lake. That's Red Green. And uh, you orphans, remember, uh, when you grow up, uh, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Next. I'm Pat Shaughnessy, and I'm auditioning for a uh, part of Red. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh. <clears throat> Don't worry. Uh, the pack of rabid wolves are dead. <laughs> it would have been easier if I had had some kind of weapon, but what are, what are a few scars compared to knowing you saved a busload of Orphans. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Dialogue should be believable. It's like when I was with Meryl Streep. Next. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm Edgar Montrose, and I'm auditioning for the part of Bernice. Next. <laughs> We're auditioning for the crowd scene. Next. <laughs> oh. This week on Adventures with Bill, he was uh, set up a kind of a charity car wash thing. And Junior Singleton had left his car as the first one we were gonna we were gonna wash. Bill, there's quite a few uh, quite a few items. Maybe uh, maybe too many items is what comes to my mind. <laughs> Must be getting paid by the hour here rather than by the, by the car. He's put brings all that stuff, puts it in the garbage. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Bill, why would you why would you throw yeah yeah hello? Why would you throw all that stuff in the garbage? Uh, if, Oh, oh my, oh, all right, oh, yeah, he's got one of those power, have you seen these things? It's a power sprayer, I'll start, no, okay, all right, all right, Bill doesn't like advice, he likes to just start things on his own. <laughs> Give her a pull there, Bill. Give her another one. Give her another one. Bill, if I could just, no, all right, okay, all right, all right. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that's called Nemesis. Bill, just excuse me a minute. There's a little adjustment on the machine. It's uh, the choke. It's a French word. Push that and uh, look at that. See that? See that? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. All right, away we go. These things can put up to three, four hundred pounds of pressure. And, uh, where's uh, I don't. Where's uh, where where where's Bill? Where's the sprayer? What happened? What's going on? Where is he, Bill? Bill, oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Bill, hang on, hold her, hold her, hold her, hold her, oh, 
okay, okay. All right, there we go, there we go. That's a two-man unit right there, and now we're really sprinting. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. Uh, can we, can we maybe, uh, turn the pressure? Now, Bill, Bill, do you think, Bill, I think maybe we should, uh, I think we should turn, I, I think we should turn the, turn the, turn the, turn the pressure down a bit. Well, we haven't just washed this car. I think we've increased his gas mileage because she's about 500 pounds lighter. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe closing the windows might have been, might have been a plan. I just thought it was really clean. Um... Gee, I, I hope Junior paid to have the inside done, too. <laughs> what do we do now, Bill? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna block. All right, Harold, come on in. You're the returning hero. Kiss to the sheriff's daughter. Yeah, yeah. Show her your love, Harold. No, no, good call. Good call. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. Okay, now look around for your Uncle Red. Hey, you can't see him. Where is he? You realize he must have been killed during the food fight. <laughs> yes, exactly. Suddenly you're very sad. Put your hat over your heart. A couple of tears, Harold, wouldn't hurt. More tears. No, no, no. no. <laughs> crying, 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 crying. Do you realize, Harold, you've lost the greatest man who ever lived? <laughs> and cock, and cock, cock. All right, I think we got enough. Beautiful. Good work. Got enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good work. Oh, good. Good. Fine. How are we getting enough? We only shot for an hour versus the film. Well, that's another thing, Harold. Like, the movies today are way too long. I mean, haven't these movie makers heard of kidney stones, for gosh sakes? <laughs> yeah, but you left the lens cap on for the first 15 minutes. It was just establishing the mood, Harold. And plus, we can't shoot anymore, because I invited a distributor to come up and take a look at this. You invited a movie distributor up here? Oh! Well, no, well, he's an auto parts distributor, but he knows some people. Welcome to the expert portion of the show, the part of the show where we explore those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know! <laughs> Trey, excellent. <laughs> okay, uh, joining me, Uncle Red, in the expert portion of the show this week is a man who's been in the forest for over 18 years, Ranger Gord. Hi, everyone. I missed you. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, um, our first letter goes as follows. Uh, dear experts, my husband and I like to go camping, especially since the recession. I noticed that the campgrounds, I noticed that the campgrounds are getting destroyed by thoughtless campers whom I've never seen once at our church. What are, you, what are your feelings on this matter? All right, uh, well, the thing with garbage is you don't want it all concentrated in the, in the one spot. So what I do is I just put it all up on the roof of the van. And, uh, and I make sure I leave my campsite at night. <laughs> well, Red, well, that's, that's thoughtless. That's, that's criminal. And it's an assault on Mother Nature. Well, I'm just trying to get even for what she did to you. <laughs> uh, no, Red, uh, Harold is right. Folks, when you're camping, you're living in some animal's home. You know, it could be a squirrel, it could be a chipmunk's. You know, and they have uh, personalities and feelings. Oof. Especially the chipmunk. <laughs> anyway, no, so you can't just <laughs> dump garbage in their home. Oh, and you can't eat a chipmunk, because it'll be months before the other chipmunks will forgive you. <laughs> True. Well, that's certainly good advice. Yeah. So when you leave a campsite, you have to make sure that you leave it exactly the way you found it. Exactly, you know. Pick up any bottles or napkins. If you dropped any breadcrumbs, pick the all them up. And of course, uh, you have to uh, douse the fire properly. And after it's doused, you pick up all the little pieces of wood, you put them together, you form them into a log, and rebuild the tree. <laughs> well, now, 
how the heck does that work, Gordon? Because the logs, most of them are burned away at that point. Right, of course, you have to use filler. Yeah. And the filler <laughs> is made out of uh, pine cones, spruce needles, and muskrat milk. More good advice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe next time when Rancher Gord's here, he can actually tell us how you uh, milk a muskrat. <laughs> Well, certainly not on a first date. <laughs> yeah. I'll never do that again. <laughs> Who brings tomatoes to a movie theater? I, I wouldn't call that a movie theater. That was a vegetable barn, that was. <laughs> Just be thankful it wasn't watermelon season. <laughs> you brought it on yourself. You did, you did, you did, with all those credits in the movie. R written by Red Green, conceived by Red Green, starring Red Green, directed by Red Green, key grip, Red Green, get a grip, Red Green. <laughs> but you know. We didn't, we didn't even give that movie a chance, Harold. Well, I, I know. I know. I know. Criticism can be hurtful. It can be, yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad I could snap that out. <laughs> you can learn something from it well, sometimes, yeah. too. Yeah. I, had, I, I, learned, I learned something. I learned that you don't have to be a Hollywood hotshot spending millions of dollars to make a bad movie. I can do it right here for next to nothing. <laughs> wow. Maybe next time somebody wants to make a really bad movie, maybe they'll call you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, meeting time, oh. Uncle Red. Yeah. Where you go, Harold. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And uh, sorry about the mess on my clothes. Tried to make a spaghetti western. Ended up with a face full of tomato sauce. <laughs> For the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here, Pop and Lodge. We just have uh, the one announcement tonight. It's from uh, Winston Rothschild, the Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Uh, he wants to remind all of us that uh, with corn on the cob season here and the high temperatures, make sure your holding tanks are well vented. Why do I read these? <laughs> That's disgusting! Someone's got to proofread these before I start doing that. But it's good advice, though, you know. It is, it is a high season, so to speak. 